I am going to start at the very beginning of the process of going to your homework and doing homework. And then we're going to talk about graphing in my math lab, which is something a lot of people have trouble with because it take in the beginning, it takes a while to get used to it. So here we go. I'm going to share my screen. It's what it's called. And then I'm going to use Google Chrome. And I'm going to click on NWAC. And I'm going to log in to my NWAC. Now, the reason I logged into my NWAC and not just Canvas is I wanted to show you that here you have student email. You can find your student email here at the very beginning menu. I find my employee email here. EagleNet is here. Success Planner is here. And what do you know, Canvas is here. I'm going to click on Canvas. OK, these are tiles. You should have a tile for every NWAC class. The class we're in today is Co-Requisite College Algebra. And so I click here, and here's what your home screen looks like. Even says home. If you need for us to set up a, a virtual time to, um, to work on math, we're gonna use this link right here. That's the link I'm on right now. When you take exams, you'll be using this link. In order to learn the whole process for uh, how to get started in the class, you wanna go to start here and click on start here. And then follow these steps. But right now I'm going to first day. First day is the My Math Lab program we use. And then I'm going to click on launch uh, courseware. Here's your book. That's only one of the places your book is. -da -da -da. Yeah, we'll give it time. There we go. OK, with and here's the table of contents over here. OK, but that's not where we're going. We are going to launch courseware. And then you can use the links over here. I mean, I would use the instructor tools. You can use the student tools, but I like going here. Because there's so much stuff here. Goodness. Now, I want to go to assignments, which is where the assignments are. But I did want to show you that you have chapter contents and e-text to read the book. And you've got multimedia library where you can find all of these different things for every section we cover. Um, college Algebra Essential Topics videos, learning activities, PowerPoints, animations, interactive figures, multimedia textbook, video, chapter test prep, interactive figures, and even a personal inventory. Definitely worthwhile. Okay, but now I'm going to assignments. And here's what we're doing today. If you click there, 
well, today. It would be on Tuesday. That's what we did, although we haven't done it yet because it's still Monday when I'm making this video. Um, and you can get you can get an extra point for answering the question. Choose the right face. And I'm not going to tell you which is which. But back to assignments. The real math assignment is our second assignment right here. A more advanced look at functions because this is the college algebra class. And what we're going to be doing, this shows I've already done these, and that's what it looks like when you get part of a problem right, but not all of it. I'm going to go to question one, and I'm going to find us, I've already done this, so I'm going to find a similar question. And then here's how I'm going to calculate. I'm going to bring up my Wabbit Emu TI 84C Silver Edition calculator, emulator. It's a TI calculator emulator, which means it's virtual. And now, as we start with a hard one first. We are going to graph. Yes, we are. We're going to graph this function. F of X equals negative one minus the absolute value of X. The what? Yeah the absolute value of X. And what we're being asked to do here is to find the Y coordinates, F of X is just Y, remember. Find the Y coordinates that occur when the X coordinate occurs. So when X is negative two, what is Y? When X is negative one, what is Y? When X is zero, what is Y? So on and so forth. So this is how I'm going to do this. Ah, uh, now stop that. Negative, this, you hit this button when a number is negative. Negative one minus the absolute value of X. So I click on math, and then I'm going to go, do you see how math is highlighted? I'm going to click the right arrow key to go over to num for numbers. And right at the top is abs for absolute value. So I'm going to click enter. Now I'm going to put a number here. And the number that we're going to start with is negative two. So negative two. And then I'm going to hit the right arrow key and come over here. Here we have negative one minus the absolute value of negative two. Now, if you remember your absolute values, you know that the absolute value of negative two is positive two. So that what we really have is negative one minus two, which should be negative three, but we're going to let the calculator do the calculating. Yes, negative three. So I'm going to come here. Do you see the blue box? Click and type negative three. Where'd it go? Click negative three. What is it doing? Negative, oh, no. Why is it, it oh, I know why. Because this, for this, for my math lab, I need to use my, my computer keyboard 
And here I was stuck on stupid over on my calculator keyboard. OK, well, we're going to get unstuck from stupid and do this now. Keyboard, Barbara, negative three. Ta -da! We have to go through all of these numbers. That is, what is y when x is negative two? Well, it's negative three. F of x and y are the same thing. Now, we need to, to put in a negative one for x. I'm going to use the shortcut. That is helpful. When you've typed the first problem correctly, you can just get a copy of it by hitting second, enter. Woohoo! There we are. Second, enter, and notice it's exactly what I have up here. Only I also have a cursor. So using the left arrow key, I can move backwards. And now I need negative one. I've already got the negative, so let's put a one right here and then hit the right arrow key. So I have negative one minus the absolute value of negative one. And the absolute value of negative one is positive one. So negative one minus one is negative two. However, we're gonna let the calculator do this. Enter. Yes, it's negative two. Now, I'm going to use my computer keyboard, negative two. There we go. All right, now, second, enter. Our next number that we're going to put into the absolute value bars is zero. So I back up, I back up. I have two characters there and only one of them is going to be zero. So if I overwrite with a zero, I still have a one that I have to delete. So delete. And then right arrow key. There. Negative one minus the absolute value of zero. Well, the absolute value of zero is zero. So the answer should be negative one. Let's see. Negative one, doggone. Negative one. Now we're moving into positive numbers. <clears throat> the next number we're going to put into the absolute value bars is a one, positive one. So I go backwards, click on one and the right arrow key right there. I'll have negative one minus the absolute value of one. That should be negative two. There. OK, so we have negative two. And then finally, we're going to put a two in. The absolute value bars. So one more time, we'll go second enter. I'll back up with the left arrow key cover one, click two, and come out to the end, and hit enter, and I have negative three. So, here I have some answers I think are correct. I have one, two, three, four, five points. The point negative two, negative three, negative one, negative two, zero, negative one, one, negative two, two, 
negative three. You would think that for what's coming next after I hit check answer, well, let's look and see, check answer. Excellent, I love it when it tells me that. Now, you would think as I thought the first time I did this, I thought I would just click on each of these points, but that's not, not the way it works at all. So, watch what I do. I'm going to come up here to the magnifying glass with a plus in it and make this bigger so it's easier to see. Now, there's a trick to doing this. And here it is. I'm going to go to the very lowest No, I'm not. I'm going to point out to you that what we're dealing with here is an absolute value with a minus sign in front. When you have a minus sign in front of an absolute value, you have to find the point with the highest y coordinate. Now this can be a little tricky, but if we go here, notice that that's negative three, that's negative two, and that's negative one. The number negative one on the y-axis is higher than negative two and negative three. Well, those are my y-coordinates, negative one, negative two, and negative three. I have to go to the highest y-coordinate. So our point with the highest y-coordinate is zero, negative one. Here's what I do. The first thing is I come down to my toolbar and I choose the icon for the absolute value. Now I know that an absolute value always, always, always looks like a V. And there's a V. But if you don't know, if you hover your mouse, over each of these icons, some little words come up that tell you exactly what it is. So when I hover over the V, I get absolute value tool. There we go. So here we go, X is, uh, the point is zero, negative one. So X is zero, Y is negative one, and I'm going to Click. How cool. Now, look at that, it gives me a V. I can go to the next point, which is one negative two, or any other of my points I have here. One negative two. Click. And then I'm going to check my answer. OK, before I go on to the next problem. I want you to know that if there had been a plus in front of this absolute value. I would have looked for the lowest Y coordinate. It's kind of backwards. But it's the way it is. You will know more later in the semester, but right now this might be all you know. So let's go down over, let's go over to the next problem. I could either go directly because it, it was going to give me next problem 
or I can click here for next problem. And I've done this one. So there we go. We're going to be graphing this also. Clear. 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 Clear, 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 clear. Doggone it. There, okay. Let's look at what we're looking at right now, and you might not be able to see it, so I'll type it for you larger. We are looking for x squared. There's a, the, there's a, um, an x squared key that gives you the two, not the x squared, but the two. The x is located here. So this is going to be x squared plus 5. So uh, I am going to end up having to get rid of that, but I just wanted you to look at it. This is what we're dealing with. Now I'm going to put different numbers in for the x, just like I did for the absolute value. The only thing is, is that the numbers I start with are going to be negative. And whenever I use a negative number in a calculator, or at least in a TI, I need to put parentheses around it. So let me show you where the parentheses are. They're right above the eight and the nine key. Okay. So I'm going to type negative two, but I'm going to put parentheses around it. So left parenthesis, negative two, right parenthesis. Then I hit the X squared key, and then the plus five, plus five. So there I go. Now I hit enter. And what I get is nine. The reason for that is that negative two squared is a four, a positive four. Four plus five is nine. Let me show you what would have happened if I had not used parentheses. Negative two squared plus five. Enter. Totally the wrong answer. Oops. OK. So now I'm going to do it again. That was silly. Parenthesis, negative two, parenthesis closed, squared plus five, enter. That's a nine. So I click on the first blue box there, right beside negative two, and I click on positive nine. All right, now we go back. I use my trick second enter, which gives me a copy of this that I can overwrite. I can move my cursor back to the two and put a one in for the two because we need to have the number negative one in the parentheses. Enter. That'll be a six. Okay, was that fun? All right, now I'm going to go second, enter. I'm going to back up. Now I have to put zero in here. I type zero, but I still have a character. Let me show you. I still have a character left over because there are two characters when you type a negative number or more. So I need to delete this one 
here's the delete key right here. Delete. Now, I don't have to go all the way over here before I hit enter, but I'm going to anyway. The answer is five. There, I did. I did it again. OK, I keep doing that. I keep forgetting that I need to switch to my computer keyboard when I'm typing in my math lab. Now. Had to get rid of that five someday. I don't know, someday far, far in the future, I will learn. Here we go. I'm now going to type second enter. The next number I add for X is one. One. OK, so there's what I've got. A one in parentheses. I don't really need to have a one in parentheses, but why should I go to the trouble to erase the parentheses? I mean, I could just have one squared plus five because one is a positive number. But why go to extra steps? That's always my feeling. And the answer is six. And finally, second, enter, back up, Two, two, there. These are the steps I went to. You might not have been able to see them. Backing up, and then I typed a two boom, in there, and then came out to the end. Then I hit enter, and I get a nine. So here are my points, negative 2, 9, negative 1, 6, 0, 5, 1, 6, 2, 9. Let's see if those are right. Well done. OK, now I can click bigger here. Or I can click it there, but it's definitely not bigger. So I'm going to go here and make this as large as I can. Now there's a trick to graphing quadratic functions, which is what this is. It's a lot like graphing an absolute value. You'll learn later in the semester why this is true. That is, the intermediate algebra people are. There are two people in the class who uh, just came into college algebra, so they probably already know because it's covered in an intermediate algebra. When your x squared term is positive, you're going to come back here and you're going to look for the lowest y value, and that's y, uh, 5. So the point is 0, 5. I'm going to find the icon for a quadratic function, and that's a U, and it says three-point quadratic tool. So there's even a picture of it. It shows you how many points you need to find. Click. All right, now I'm prepared, but the first one I find has got to be the lowest point. And I know it's the lowest point because it's got the lowest Y coordinate. X is zero, Y is five. X is zero, Y is five. Click. Now, how about, no. That was so, that was so wrong. That was negative five. So I'm going to clear. Is it the end of the world? No, not yet. 
We're going to do it again. I'm going to click on the quadratic tool, the three point quadratic tool. And then I'm going to click on X is zero, Y is positive five. Click now. How about two, nine? And negative two, nine. There, those are the three points I chose. Let's see if it's right. Check answer. That's incorrect. Two, nine. Negative two. The nine should have been over there. I can drag this, he he. Now let's check. Excellent. All right. All right, now I think you're getting the idea. But let's do one more. This time I have a negative X squared. So when I'm going to graph, I'm going to look for the most positive, the highest Y coordinate. Sounds opposite, doesn't it? But again, you'll understand better toward the end of the semester. So I'm going to see if I close this down and then start it again. And then hit clear, yes. That saves me several steps. I like that. All right, this is what I'm going to type. A negative sign, not a minus, but a negative sign. X squared plus 11. All right, that's what we're dealing with. F of X, which is really just Y, equals negative X squared plus 11. So here's what this means. Again, the X's we're working with are negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. So what I'm actually going to calculate, <laughs> okay, is, that got me all upset, negative, paren, negative two, paren, squared plus 11. And that's seven. Now negative two squared is positive four, but it's got a negative sign out in front of it. So this is going to be negative of positive four or negative four. Negative four plus 11 is positive seven. Now, back we go. I'm going to type second, enter and do exactly what I did before. Our next X coordinate is negative one. So I'll put a one. And hit enter. And I get a 10. Now. OK, second of the next number is zero. The X, the next X coordinate is zero. I go backwards. I cover the negative and type zero. Wait. 
That's where I'm at, but I'm going to have to delete that one. And then I come to the end just so you can see the whole thing. I hit enter. So that's 11. Now our next number is positive one. Second, enter. Back up, up, up. Don't do it yet. There we go. Back up, cover the zero, type one. So you have negative one squared plus 11. And that's a 10. One more time, we're going to put, we're going to use a, a two X coordinate. Two. Nah, I ought to come back. This is what I did. Back, 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 back. Now that the cursor is covering the two, well, it was a one, so I typed a two. Remember that one, well, I can't go up. It won't let me scroll. Dog on it. Enter. Gives me a seven. There. Now, I've tried going straight to graphing and it won't let me. And I keep wondering what's wrong and wondering what's wrong. And what's wrong is I didn't click on check answer. Thank you. OK, again, what I find much better than clicking there is making this bigger. And then now this is still a quadratic, even though it's a negative quadratic. So this is the general icon for all quadratics, whether they're positive or negative. Now, when I have a negative quadratic, well, it's the opposite way around. I'm looking for my highest Y coordinate. And again, this isn't the real explanation, but you won't get that till the end of the semester. So just relax and take my word for it. 0, 11. 11 is my highest Y coordinate. So I go to X equals 0, right there at the very center, the origin. I go up to 11 and I click. Now, this is a three-point graph. So I am going to go to negative two, seven. It doesn't matter which three, which three points I do, except the first one has to be something we call a vertex, which is with a negative quadratic, the highest Y coordinate, the point that has the highest Y coordinate. Okay, now here's negative two, and I go down, to positive seven. Click. And how about one ten? So I'll go over to X equals one. Nine. Ten. And then I'll check answer. Yes, got it right this time. OK. Now we've got one more and that's a cubic. Oh, let's do it. 
Let's do it. It's not the worst thing in the world. Is it? Here's our cubic. X raised to the third power. Now, how I got that is I first clicked this up arrow, which gave me that box up here. Then I typed a three. Now watch carefully. If I type the rest of the problem, the rest of the expression, the rest of the function, minus six, it's gonna be up there. That is not what I want. Delete, delete. Now, so let's go back to three and type the three again. Three, now you have to hit your right arrow key to come down, and then I can type minus six. That's what we're dealing with. This is called a cubic highest power three. That's why you can't use letters. The calculator, since there's not a number in there, the calculator thinks it's zero. So zero minus six. That's all right. I want to leave it there so I can look at it. We're still using the same X coordinates, negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. Here we go. Perin, negative two, perin, Up arrow, it's actually called a carrot, C-A-R-E-T, like a diamond. And then down, minus six. Now remember, you're not going to have to type all that again. So it's okay one time. Enter. I get negative 14. Negative 14. Okay, now, second, enter. I back up, cover the two, put a one, because the next X coordinate we're dealing with is X equals negative one. Enter. And that's a negative seven. Oh, my kitty is here to visit. All wet from playing in the snow. Goodness, wasn't that a great snowstorm? Today is January 17th. It's Martin Luther King Day, and school starts again tomorrow, the beginning of spring semester. And we're beginning with lots of snow. It's going to snow again on Wednesday. Life is so exciting. Okay, back to work. Negative two, negative one. Now we're switching to zero. Second, enter. Oops, I keep forgetting that. I back up, boom, 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 boom. I cover the minus sign, the negative sign rather, with a zero and I delete the one. And then I want to come out to the end just so you can see. Zero cubed minus six. Enter is negative six. Now, second enter. Boom, 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 boom. Next number is positive one. I didn't put my answer in, did I? No, I didn't. This was negative six, and this is negative five. But it shouldn't be. Oh, never mind. Ignore me. 
Um, all right, now, last number is two. That's right, it is. The net last number is two. So second enter. Cover the one. Cover the one. Type a two. Go back. Enter. That's a two. Okay, I'm getting nervous. Whoa, all right. Go bar. Go bar. Please. Now. You probably have not seen a lot of cubics yet but you're gonna this semester, later in the semester, but this is a cubic right here. And as you hover your hand over it, you will see that it says four point cubic tool. So we are going to end up putting in almost all the points. Click. So let's see how we do this. Negative two, negative 14. So start here at the center. One, two, that's negative two to the left. Well, two to the left is negative two. And then I go down to negative 14. And then negative one, negative seven. Here's negative one. negative seven, and then zero, negative six, zero, zero, negative six, and one, negative five. Check. Ah, I thought for sure I'd get it wrong. That was interesting. OK. Next thing is a story problem. We'll do that in class, but I wanted to make a video of the graphing because. I don't want to do it in class. This way you can just watch the video. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.